in this uh, lecture let's uh, continue the topic on the periodic and the non periodic signals periodic signals which have a pattern repeating such signals can be called as periodic signals you can think of v of t equal to say 230 sin of 40 pi t so this kind of a voltage signal can be considered classified as a periodic signal reason is that the signal has a particular frequency uh, from your basic uh, understanding you know that uh, the signal uh, is uh, having omega t equal to 40 pi t and therefore omega is uh, 40 pi and therefore omega is nothing but actually 2 pi f correct so this is 40 pi and hence you can say that f is equal to 40 pi by 2 pi so this uh, pi get cancelled and 40 by 2 which is 20 so the frequency of this signal is uh, 20 hertz so this is a signal which is going to repeat every 20 Uh, uh, every one uh, by twenty hertz. That is one over twenty. You can determine the signal frequency in this way. These are some of the examples wherein the signal is periodic. So there is a value for which the uh, this uh, it satisfies this relation. That is, f is equal to one over t. or there is a time period t such that it is 1 by f not which satisfies further that x of t plus t is equal to x of t that means even after the time duration t the signal is still x of t so this is our uh, uh, classification this is the basis on which we can uh, find out whether the signal is uh, periodic or not this concept is applicable even to the discrete time signals also let's uh, uh, you know think of uh, some two three uh, basic examples uh, and uh, let us find out whether these signals are uh, indeed uh, periodic if they are periodic how do we determine uh, how do we ascertain that they are periodic and so on so let's look at the example x of uh, t x of t equal to um, cos of cos of 20 pi t cos of 20 pi t cos of 20 pi t is it periodic or aperiodic and if it is periodic what is its fundamental time period and uh, and uh, so on so let's uh, compare this with the standard value so we can write omega t is equal to 20 pi t therefore omega is equal to 20 pi so this results in uh, 2 pi f is equal to uh, 20 pi or f is equal to 20 pi by 2 pi which is 10 so f is 10 and uh, therefore uh, t which is 1 over f is 1 by 10 so this is the uh, whole uh, idea now we got the signal as a periodic signal you can observe uh, from the basic definition itself is that a cosine signal of this nature is uh, periodic now the time period that we have got is it actually the time period if you want to ascertain then you can substitute the x of t plus t in it and uh, check whether you obtain x of t uh, the meaning is suppose if if you substitute x of t with this new found t are you going to still get x of t so this is what you can uh, try to uh, verify so let us substitute uh, the same thing over here 
so i shall write x of i'll write uh, in place of uh, cos cos of 20 pi t is there so i'll write a t plus t what is the t value that i have is to be substituted over here that is equal to cos of 20 pi t plus 20 pi capital T. Okay. Let's also substitute the value of uh, capital T, which is 20 pi t plus 20 pi into previously we have obtained the value of uh, t as a uh, uh, 1 by 10 right so let's substitute the same over here 1 by 10 so this amounts to cos of 20 pi t plus so you can see that you can strike this and 2 so this whole thing will be equal to 2 pi so you already know from your basic education that cos of theta plus 2 pi is equal to cos of theta. So, on applying the same here, so we get cos of 20 pi t, which is nothing but the signal which was given earlier, that is x of t. So, from this you can conclude that x of t plus capital T is the same as x of t and hence the given signal is periodic and we could verify the same result over here. Sometimes what happens is that uh, the signal may not be. Let's take another example uh, to verify whether a signal given is a periodic or not. Let's consider uh, x of uh, t, x of t equal to cos of 2t cos of 2t cos of 2t you can observe there is no pi term over there but it's not essential you can uh, still have omega t is equal to 2t and hence uh, 2 pi f is equal to 2 and therefore f is equal to 2 by 2 pi which is 1 by pi so even with 1 by pi also the signal is going to be uh, absolutely periodic over there you can verify this uh, so therefore what will be t so t is uh, 1 over f which will be pi so the time period is uh, t the uh, other category of signals can be this way which is x of t is equal to e raised to minus 4t e raised to minus 4t is this signal periodic if you were to visualize i would also suggest the learner over here to uh, always make it a point to visualize the signals how is e raised to minus 4t if you can uh, you know uh, plot this e raised to minus 4t you can see that the signal is something like this this is e raised to minus 4t at t equal to at t equal to 0 the value over here is 1 and rest all it is uh, continuously decreasing so you can see that there is absolutely no way in which this signal can be periodic but assume that if this signal were to be a periodic signal then it must satisfy this relation that is x of t plus t is equal to x of t let us uh, substitute the same over there that is e raised to minus 4 into t plus t is equal to e raised to minus 4 t into e raised to minus 4 capital t now this whole thing will be equal to e raised to minus 4 t only provided we have this portion that is e raised to minus 4t 
equal to 1. If e raised to minus 4 into capital T is equal to 1, then e t the whole thing is just multiplied by uh, 1 and you get e raised to minus 4t. When is that possible? That is possible only when capital T is equal to 0. In other words, there cannot be any possible positive capital T that is time period which is going to satisfy this uh, expression of uh, x of t plus t equal to x of uh, uh, t and hence the given signal can never be mathematically also a periodic signal. Okay, So the signal is non-periodic. The other term used for non-periodic signal is a periodic signal. So a periodic or simple way non-periodic signal. This is the case where we have the signals being uh, um, you know individually given. Suppose if it is a sum of uh, more than one, two or three different uh, sub, sub components, then what is the condition? Let us look at such an example. So, I am going to consider a signal x of uh, t equal to say 4 cos of 10 pi t minus uh, plus 3 cos of 16 pi 16 pi t 16 pi t let us look at uh, this example here here let us uh, first uh, determine the time period t1. So, comparing with the standard one, omega 1 is equal to 10 pi. It means 2 pi f1 is equal to 10 pi. So, f1 is equal to 10 pi by 2 pi, which is 5. So, f1 is 5. On, on that terms t1 is equal to 1 by 5. So it can be determined in this way. On the same lines, the second uh, component of the signal is having omega 2 is equal to 16 pi. I can write this as 2 pi by t2. The first one I wrote it as a 2 pi f1 and then finally I found f1 and then I uh, inverted it to get t1. In this example, I am showing you another way wherein I am writing it as 2 pi by t2 and uh, therefore that is equal to 16 pi. So therefore t2 is equal to 2 pi by 16 pi which is 1 by 8 which is 1 by 8. So, there are now two components in the given signal. There are two frequency components. Individually, these two frequency components are periodic. But what about the total signal that is x of t? The total signal is going to be periodic provided the ratio of t1 and t2 is periodic that is ratio of t1 to t2 if it is a rational number if it is a rational number then the signal is going to be periodic let us verify that so what is t1 by t2 t1 by t2 is t1 you know it is 1 by 5 and t2 is 1 by 8 so 1 by 5 whole by 1 by 8 which is 1 by 5 into 8 by 1 which is 8 by 5. So, 8 by 5 is a rational number and hence you can conclude that the given signal is periodic. So, from our discussion we found that individually the first component is periodic. Similarly, the second component on its own is a periodic signal. But the x of t happens to be the sum of the two signals 
and the sum of two signal also happens to be a periodic uh, signal because the ratio T1 to T2, ratio of T1 over T2 is found to be 8 by 5 which is a rational number and hence we can conclude that X of T is periodic. I want to take up another example wherein there will be a small deviation and the deviation will be very clearly visible to you which is x of t is equal to 3 sin of 4 pi t plus 4.5 4.5 sin of 40 t 40 t so we can repeat our procedure here by determining omega 1 omega 1 is 4 pi and we know that omega 1 is 2 pi by t 1 which is 4 pi and hence you can say that t 1 is 2 pi by 4 pi which is 1 by 2. So, sin of 4 pi t which is the first part of the given x of t is periodic. The given signal is periodic. Similarly, the next component which is omega t equal to 40. This is nothing but 2 pi by t2 this is equal to 40. Therefore, T2 is equal to 2 pi by 40, which is pi by 20. So, pi by 20 is also a very valid time period. So, T2 is the time period of only the component sine of 40 T. If you want to verify, you can substitute in sine of 40 t, you can substitute sine of 40 t plus this uh, 20. Okay, that is you can substitute here sine of 40 t plus capital T and verify the values, you will still get sine of 40 t only. So, this is valid. But the interesting twist is in this case when you take the ratio of T1 and T2. Ratio of T1 and T2 is 1 by 2 by pi by 40. Uh, sorry. Pi by 20. So this becomes 1 by 2 into 20 by pi which can be simplified as 10 by pi. Therefore, the ratio of T1 to T2 is 10 by pi, which is not a rational number. Therefore, though the individual signals are periodic, the sum of these two signals is not a periodic signal. Therefore, the signal X of T is not a periodic signal or you can classify this as a periodic signal a periodic signal so there are uh, multiple ways in which you can determine the periodicity of a given signal we are looking at the classification of the signals the next classification of signals is causal and non-causal signals causal and non-causal signals. A signal which is defined for only n or t greater than or equal to 0, such signals are classified as causal signals. Example, x of n. Suppose if x of n is say 2, 2, minus 4, 3, minus 1, 2. This is a signal. Okay. So, if I were to assume the origin to be over here, then this signal is non-zero for 
n greater than or equal to 0 for n less than 0 n less less than 0 what is the value of uh, x of n so all x of n value for n less than 0 for example x of minus 1 is 0 x of uh, minus uh, 2 is 0 okay you can consider any value x of minus 5 is 0 x of minus 15 is 0 x of minus 500 is 0 so all the values below x of uh, below n equal to 0 they are all 0 so this signal which is defined only for n greater than or equal to 0 such signal is called as a causal signal let's take this example x of n x of uh, n equal to u of n okay u of n what is u of n u of n is defined as u of n is defined as 1 for n greater than or equal to 0 and this is 0 for n less than 0 so if you were to plot this signal the signal will look something like this so this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 5 and so on and on the same line this is minus 1 this is minus 2 and this is a signal so the signal amplitude is 1 over these values you can see this is how the value is 1 suppose all these heights are 1 so this is called as a plot of all the signals so this signal you can define it as u of n now as per the definition of u of n you can uh, look at the values of uh, u of n at n equal to minus 1 it is 0 over here it is 0 so all the previous values the values are going to be the u of n value is going to be uh, 0 it means to say that the signal is defined only for n greater than or equal to 0 and hence the given signal is a causal signal so this is one example let's uh, take one more example x of n x of n equal to 2 minus 2 4 minus 4 and 3 this is the origin now the signal is defined for n is equal to 0, n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3 and apart from that it is also defined for n is equal to minus 1. Therefore, okay, since the value is defined for n is equal to minus 1 also, whatever value, it is a non-zero value over there and hence the signal has been defined for even minus 1. Even if one sample is there at uh, minus 1 or any other value, uh, below n equal to 0 the signal can be classified as non-causal signal let's consider this example x of n is equal to a raised to n u of n in the previous example you have been uh, 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 you know told about what is uh, the u of n so u of n is u of n is uh, the signal defined for n greater than or equal to 0 only and uh, its value is always 1. Now this signal if at all it is multiplied with the a raised to n assume that a value is uh, say um, 2 example a value is 2 or 5 or 0.5 or minus 0.5 and so on you can get a variety of uh, signals possible but uh, nevertheless it is going to be multiplied by u of n the moment you multiply the signal a raised to n by u of n even if the value is uh, defined for n less than or equal to 0 uh, less than 0 all the values over there will be uh, nullified and hence you will get only the uh, positive values so that portion i would like to uh, redraw over here and uh, show it to you i'll assume that uh, a is uh, say 2 example and uh, you can consider this to be 1 this to be 2 3 4 5 here it is minus 1 minus 2 and so on 
So if a is a 2 and a raised to n means these are the values. So a raised to 0 obviously it is going to be 1. So a raised to 1, a raised to 0 is 1, a raised to 1 is uh, 2, a raised to 2 that is 2 raised to 2 is 4, then uh, a raised to 3 that is 2 raised to 3 is 8 and so on so forth. And on the other side you will get lesser values because it is so the overall envelope of the signal is something like this. So this is the uh, entire signal. Now this signal is being multiplied by u of n. So u of n is always 1 at these locations. Rest everywhere it is 0, right? So this thing. So when you multiply these two signals, obviously the result is going to be that only the uh, positive n values are going to be retained. So these values, only these values will be retained. So this is how the values are going to be retained. Therefore, the signal that is resultant signal, uh, this I can write it as 2 raised to n u of n. So this is defined only for n greater than or equal to 0 and hence the signal is a causal signal. The next classification that we shall see is uh, deterministic and uh, random signals. Signals which can be determined at any value uh, at uh, any time instance t or n such signals can be classified as a deterministic signal. Random signals occur very randomly either in systems or in uh, nature. The example for this deterministic signal, very uh, way in which you can express the signal itself is uh, the uh, you know basis for classification. That is, if you can write a formula for that particular signal, then that is a uh, deterministic signal. Uh, suppose you know current through current through a, a resistor uh, is suppose uh, twenty five point four sine of 40 pi t amperes okay so this is the expression for the signal the expression for the current now this current is you know can be determined at any value of t you can substitute the value of t suppose if you want to find the value of t at uh, so, sorry the current at uh, t equal to 0 you can substitute t equal to 0 and you get uh, some relation. If you want to find it at uh, t is equal to 0.5, just substitute the value of uh, t as 0.5 and you get the result over here. So you can determine the value. Uh, but think of uh, uh, the chirping of a bird, the amplitude of uh, noise uh, and the signals that you get in a classroom, right? Randomly someone might uh, talk and uh, the amplitude will be different and uh, immediately after that it could be the, a silent class and so on. So we do not know how the signal is going to emanate and from where it is going to be originating. So the such signals can be classified as random signals. Obviously you can't uh, write any mathematical relation for these signals. So the signals can be now classified as uh, deterministic and random signal. So till now we have discussed at uh, varieties of classification of signals into even and odd signal, continuous and discrete time signals, causal and non-causal signals, periodic and aperiodic signals and uh, finally deterministic and uh, random signals. So these are these form a basis for us to venture into in more detail the classification and then the analysis of the signal. Please recall that when we talked about the signals in the very first introductory course, it was about an entity which is intended to, to convey information. So the entity that we are talking about is this uh, signal and the signal is supposed to carry information and it is, uh, it is carrying information. Obviously the system has to work on this signal and extract the information. So we shall look at more such discussions in the upcoming videos. Thank you.